Jesus is the serpent in the Bible and this is how. So let's get started. So one of the things that a lot of people don't understand and actually quite grasp about the scriptures is there's one particular place in the Bible where Jesus says that he is the serpent and I want to break that down in today's video. So one thing you need to understand is all the way through the scripture the serpent is always typically a symbolization um, synonymous with sin okay even going back to the garden um, when Jesus was talking to um, rebuking the Pharisees if I remember correctly one of the things he basically said was um, he was a liar even from the beginning I believe it's John 8 okay he was a liar even from the beginning um, talking about the serpent referencing back to the garden so one of the things we know about the serpent is the serpent is a, a, sim, a symbolical with sin now jesus is the serpent <laughs> what does that mean are you trying to say jesus is the devil anything like that no okay just to get that out of the way first and foremost we're not um trying to teach here some um mormon doctrine or anything like that where jesus and the devil are brothers and all that kind of things but there is a particular scripture in the bible where jesus basically calls himself the serpent so let's get into it so john 3 verse 14 to 17 look what jesus says here this is him speaking he says and as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up why that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So what did Jesus do in verse 14? What did he say? He said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, okay, so must the son of man be lifted up also. So he is there at that point contrasting, comparing himself to the serpent. Now, what serpent are we referring to here okay we know the serpent going back to Genesis 3 is always a reference to sin okay what we need to do next when we get to numbers 21 verse 7 okay to about 9 what does it say verse 7 this is when the people the Israelites had actually messed up with God and God is actually punishing them look what it says Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Now look at this, verse 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Okay, so the Lord says to Moses, make a fiery serpent, okay, and put it on a pole and lift it up. And everyone that looks onto that, to that serpent will be saved, okay, shall live. Nine, and Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived, okay. Now that's really powerful for so many different reasons. One, okay. Jesus compares himself in this in John 3 to the serpent in the wilderness. We just read about the serpent in the wilderness being a symbol of salvation. Okay. And what did God say to Moses? God said to Moses, make a serpent, okay, put it on a pole and lift it up, and everyone that looks up to the pole, okay, to the serpent, shall live. Now, how is that in comparison to what Jesus was saying? Okay. Number one, he said he was the serpent. But what did he say? He said he was the brazen serpent. Okay. Why is this so special? Because yes, generally the serpent is a symbol is a symbol of sin. But the brazen serpent, okay, what was bronze brazen what is that generally referenced as in the scriptures judgment okay so sin judged okay when you judge sin those that believe in the sin judged will live okay the same way in, in here in John 3, verse 14 to 17, when Jesus is saying, just like the brazen serpent in the wilderness, the serpent in the wilderness was lifted up. 
even so must I be lifted up. Okay. He's basically telling Nicodemus that, look, I'm going to become sin and I'm going to be judged. And anyone who looks up to me will live. Okay. So the same way in the book of Numbers 21, verse 7 to 9, God had this set up thousands of years ago before Jesus even walked the shores of Galilee, okay, as a symbol that we're going to lift up sin on a pole, okay, anyone who looks to it will live. What did they have to do? Alright Israelites, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this serpent, this brazen serpent. I'm going to put it on a pole and I'm going to lift it up. And anyone who looks on it is going to live. Moses, that's crazy. What happens? You die. But if you say, okay, you know what? This is what God set up in order for me to be saved. Believe. What happened to Jesus? Lifted up on a cross, as he said himself in John chapter 3 to Nicodemus, just as the brazen serpent lifted up, even so I'll be lifted up. What happens? Everyone who looks up to the cross, to Jesus on the cross and believes, salvation. So look, this is not really that technical when you think about it okay so it's really just comparing two scriptures john chapter 3 numbers 21 but the concept is so powerful this is something that god had literally foreshadowed and set up thousands of years ago here in the book of numbers when they were still in the wilderness okay and you're going to get all the way to when jesus is born when he's actually going to fulfill this prophecy okay so when i say jesus is the serpent we're not talking about the serpent, Satan. We're talking about the brazen serpent, which you look onto for your salvation. Okay. Now, um, sin is in everyone's life. Okay. Whether you've lied before, whether you've stolen before, whether you've cheated before, whatever it is, sin is in everyone's life. And at this point in time, just like they had to thousands of years ago, okay, thousands of thousands of years ago before Christ. Just as when Christ came, okay, he became the brazen serpent. We have to look up to Christ, okay, who became sin for us, okay, who was judged by God for us, that we could all be saved, okay. So if at this point in time you aren't looking unto and trusting in Jesus Christ, okay, um, for salvation, I'm going to invite you in today. All you have to do is believe, that's it. Okay, if you accept accepting that you're a sinner, you need a savior, and you know that Jesus is your savior, you're willing to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you believe that you're saved. So that's it. So, on that note, thanks for tuning in. Um, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks and take care.